We're going to talk about kind of the next basic um, integration technique that typically you learn. And again, when I look at an integral, I think, okay, is it basically just a basic formula that I should know? If not, the next thing I think is, is there any algebra or trig identities I can use? And after that, the next thing that usually comes to my mind is to try a, what's called a U substitution, and we're going to talk about that now. So notice this first problem. We have 2x times the quantity x squared plus 1 cubed. And if you had to, you could always, you know, just cube out the x squared plus 1 term and distribute it by the 2x. But what if we make this one a little harder? What if, in fact, we raise it, say, to the 30th power? Definitely, you're probably not going to want to multiply that one out now. It's going to be pretty tedious. So the idea is... If you look, notice at this x squared plus 1 term, if I take the derivative of x squared plus 1, I get 2x, which is convenient because there's a 2x in this problem. So you'll learn to look for things that are derivatives of each other. I'm going to make u be equal to the x squared plus 1 term. Also, things raised to powers a lot of times will be what your u should equal. From this, I calculate du. Well, du is going to be 2x, and then we tack on a dx. And the idea is we try to use this stuff, our u and our du, to relabel the original integral and make it basically back into one of the more fundamental antiderivative formulas. So if I rewrite this stuff, Okay, well, x squared plus 1, that's what I'm calling u. So I'm going to replace the x squared plus 1 with the u. It's still being raised to the 30th power. And notice once I replace that, well, I've now got u to the 30th taken care of. Well, what's left over in the problem? The th stuff still left over to replace is the 2x dx. But hey, conveniently we have that 2x dx is equivalent to du. So that's what I'm going to put inside of here. So the idea is now I've turned this into a more fundamental problem. It's like having x to the 30th dx. Well, the antiderivative of u to the 30th is just a variable to a power. I'll add 1, divide by that new number tag on my plus c since this is an indefinite integral and the last thing that you have to do on this problem since you started with x's you want to finish with x's just resubstitute what u is again so we know that u is x squared plus 1 I'm gonna plug that in right there so I'm gonna get x squared plus 1 raised to the 31st power divided by 31 plus c and that's our solution. So the trick is you're trying to somehow just relabel things and turn it back into an easier problem that you already know how to deal with. Okay, in the next problem, okay, sine times cosine, that's not one of the basic antiderivative formulas. Certainly we can do sine individually and cosine individually, but together they, they pose a little bit more of a problem. And the thing to catch here, sine and cosine are derivatives of each other. Okay, you pick up a negative in one of them, but close enough. I'm going to let u, in this case, equal sine of x. Because when I calculate the derivative of that, the derivative of sine is just cosine of x dx. And again, I'm just going to relabel. I'm going to relabel this stuff using my u and my du. So it says we're going to get, squeeze it in here, the 2 doesn't get affected by the u and the du, so the 2 is still there. Well, sine, that's what we're calling u, so that'll be 2u, and cosine of x dx is all being replaced by the du. So cosine of x dx is equivalent to du, Okay, I'll replace that with a du. And this is something I know how to find the antiderivative of again. 
it says all you have to do, the constant comes along for the ride, u, you add 1 to the power, you divide by that new power, plus c. So certainly here the 2's would cancel out. And again, all I have to do is replace u with what it was my, in my substitution. u was equivalent to sine of x. So I will get sine squared of x. Remember, that's equivalent notation to sine of x quantity squared plus c. And again, you can check by taking the derivative of this. You'll have to use the chain rule that you will, in fact, get 2 sine x cosine x. U substitutions can definitely be a little tricky. These are kind of the most fundamental cases, but look at one of the other videos. I'm definitely going to have some more complicated examples here for you.